Hi, uh, Tom Barnett here. I'm the owner of Tom's Drawing Board here in Rhinelander, Wisconsin. I have had a lot of people ask me if I would do some how-to videos. So this is my first video ever of doing a how-to video and I hope you enjoy it. So the first thing that I did was I painted a canvas black with black gesso. Uh, black gesso is just an acrylic black paint that you can paint over and it dries really fast. You want to make sure that the black gesso is completely dry before you do anything though. And then I covered the entire canvas with a liquid clear coat, which is a coat that helps keep the canvas slick so that we can move the paint around the canvas, but it's clear so it doesn't uh, muddy up our beautiful black canvas. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a number two brush. That's a two inch brush and it's a natural boar's hair bristle. So it's got some pretty stiff bristles. I don't like using uh, synthetic bristles, the plastic ones, because they leave kind of streaky paint and it, it just doesn't work with this technique that we're doing. So the bo natural boar's hair bristle is the actually a really good bristle to use. Now, as you can see here, I got all sorts of different colors here. So I got titanium white, crimson red, phthalo blue, deep yellow, phthalo green, black, Prussian blue, sap green, and uh, burnt umber brown. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to make some pretty colors in the sky. Now oil paints are naturally transparent so these paints are going to almost disappear on this canvas as I paint them on there. So I use the very corner of my brush, the very corner, I don't use the whole brush, just the corner, and I pull a thin thin layer down just like that. And then we're going to tap, tap, tap on either side. You see how I'm using the long part of my brush here? I'm tapping that in there. And I'll just tap it in there. I don't want to go face down like this. I want to do it on an angle like this. Okay. And then what we're going to do is I'm just going to pick some spots up here and I'm going to add some blotches of paint. Now, you're probably not seeing a lot of this. I can see a, the red a little bit on here but not much, and that's the point. You don't really want to see it on here. Okay, and then I'm gonna go in here without even cleaning my brush, use the same technique. I'm gonna pull a little strip down, and I'm gonna put some phthalo blue on my brush. And I'm gonna hit some spots where I don't have any red, but I'm gonna leave, leave some other spots open. We just wanna hit a few spots. And then again, without cleaning my brush, I'm gonna go right into that phthalo green, and I'm gonna grab some phthalo green, tap, tap, taps, and I'm gonna pick some areas where I want my phthalo green. And right there, that looks good. Now I'll give it a quick little side-to-side -side swipe, but I'm barely touching the canvas, barely touching it. I'm just kinda getting it all together. I'll put my palette down, and I'm gonna clean my brush in some odorless mineral spirits. Squeeze the excess out, come over here, shake it off, and we'll beat it dry. Now a lot of you have seen the Bob Ross show know exactly what that's all about. That's to clean our bristles off from all that mineral spirits going on. So I'm gonna put down my number two brush and I'm gonna pick up my fan brush. And I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna grab some just plain old titanium white. And I'm slowly moving my bristles into that white, loading it up pretty good. Just like that, okay? Now what I'm gonna do up here is I'm going to find out where my northern lights are gonna be. Now as I said, I put all these transparency kind of colors, the red, phthalo blue, uh, phthalo green, up in here, but when I hit it with this white, your sky is gonna absolutely come to life. So using the edge of my fan brush, I'm just going to draw in a squiggly kind of line like this. You can already see some of those colors starting to pop there. Other than the camera getting a little close so they can see these colors popping as I put them on there. Okay, then I'm gonna start over here. We're just gonna put a, a few bands of Northern Lights in here. And some bands are going to be bigger than others, okay? We're going to put that down. Then we're going to clean our fan brush off because we're done with him. With our fan brush, we can just wipe it off here. 
get some more mineral spirits on there and wipe off the excess paint now the fun thing about northern lights is that you can play with them a little bit to get them to the way you want them so i'm taking my very clean very dry number two brush now to make sure that your brush is dry after you beat the mineral spirits out of it you want to run it on the palm of your hand like so just to make sure that it's not all soaking wet if it is soaking wet go ahead and beat it off a little bit more or just blot it in a towel to get all that excess out okay now i am going to use the long side of my brush right here the long side and we're going to do a a, a uh, upward stroke now make sure that when you're doing this that the stroke is straight up don't go up and down but just straight up so if the camera wants to get in close and they uh, focus in on the brush here we can show you what i'm talking about so again i'm using the very straight part of my brush and i'm angling it downward a little bit and i'm just going straight up using a very firm pressure and you see how those northern lights are just coming to life now we're just using a straight upward stroke just like that okay and then we'll just move on to the next one we don't even have to clean our brush we're just moving it on and you see with all those colors that you put in the sky before we hit it with the white they're just coming to life now all these different things are coming down we're going to do another one right here and northern lights are just dancing across the sky just dancing and playing in the sky now you can also do a couple of quick little downward pulls like this and that'll make the the light show just kind of a little more realistic okay so if you have have a couple that come down that's okay but we are we don't want to do too many of those because that takes away from the effect of the upward pull so that is a beautiful northern light sky and then i'm going to clean off my brush again we'll get that done cleaning that off make sure it's dry and i'm making sure that it's dry nice and dry now i'm going to take my palette knife and i like to use a a pretty broad palette knife and i'm going to take some Prussian blue just a little bit and some black and I'm going to mix those together and I'm just going for a very dark 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 blue Prussian blue is actually pretty dark as it is but for this I want to make sure that I got a nice dark blue okay wipe my palette knife off now I want the camera to focus in on this what I need to do is create a, a uh, bead of paint on the edge of my palette knife and how we do that is we're going to pull this paint super flat all right just like you're you're frosting a cake and then we're going to put the knife on here like this we're going to angle it down and we're going to give it a little swipe and you see that bead of paint that's the amount of paint that you want on here then we're going to come over here when the camera come on in close and i'm going to show you how to do this so i have my bead of paint and I'm gonna put it against the canvas and I'm going to almost have it completely flat against the canvas. That's how you get the paint off. And I'm gonna create a shape, a mountainous shape like that. And I'm not worried about the entire mountain. I'm only worried about the upper shape. You don't wanna do shapes that look like teepees. That's the worst kind that you can do. You wanna make sure that your shape has some movement to it. You wanna make sure that you have valleys and, and peaks, but you don't wanna have uh, just peak after peak after peak after peak. That, that does not look good on this. And it doesn't look like a mountain. It looks like some teepees sitting together, all right? Now, once I have that, I'm going to pull all this paint off. I just want the canvas to be stained, okay? I want all this excess paint off as much as I can get being careful not to mess up my edges. And you hear how I'm scraping that paint? And I'm gonna clean that paint off. And I'm going to take my number two brush. And I'm going to, I want the camera to get in a little close here so you can see the bristles work. 
and I'm going to go right up against the edge right until I get to that point. And then I'm going to just pull that down. I'm pulling all the excess paint down in a nice swifting curve. All right, don't pull it straight down. Make sure you're going on a curve almost across the entire painting. And I'm just pulling this down. Now you're barely gonna see this mountain on here because of course it's a black canvas painting. But you know where it is. And with this shape you just created in front of the Northern Lines, you definitely know where it is. And we're just going to paint all that down, okay? So now you have this nice mountainous shape right here. I'm gonna clean my brush. cleaning the brush all right now we're going to mix some paint so I'm obviously going to use some white paint for the the snow on the mountain but for the shadow color I want to use some white and some of this other paint that we used and I'm creating almost like a steel gray for my shadow color I'm gonna go in here and grab a little more blue because I wanted a little more blue. And we're just, and the proper way to, to mix paint is you slap it on top of each other and then you scrape it all up, flip it over like a flapjack and just kind of pull it down like that, okay? I'm actually going to add a little more white to it because I want it to be a little more brighter. Scraping it up, slapping it down. And now you see how you have that nice steely gray color. Wipe the palette knife off. Now we're gonna pull some more white paint down. You see how flat I'm pulling that? And we're gonna go in here. We're gonna angle it down. We're gonna take a swipe. You want that nice, beautiful bead of paint. Make sure that your palette knife is nice and clean too. All right, now come on in here. And what we're gonna do is I'm going to have the white paint touch the canvas, but not the knife. If you're scraping, you're putting way too much pressure on it. I also want you to see how loose I hold this knife. So I have it in these three fingers and I'm holding it back here and I can literally make it shake. That's how loose you hold this when you're pulling the snow down. You don't wanna push really hard because then you're just digging that paint into the canvas. And you actually want the paint that's on the canvas to be pulling the paint off the knife, not the other way around. So we're gonna line up the edge of my knife on the edge of my mountain here, and I'm going to just slowly pull some of that down. That's all you want. Don't, don't overthink it. Don't, don't go back and rework it. That's what you get. Get more paint on here. I'm gonna line it up to this one. I'm gonna pull straight down. And you see all those cracks and crevices forming in the paint just from the, the pressure, the very little, little pressure I'm putting on here. It creates all those little interesting uh, features in your mountain and your snow. I'm going here and actually add a couple more. I like to make my uh, snow banks touch a little bit. So that just adds to the 3D effect. Now, if you see here, I left this blank because that's a perfect spot for a shadow color. So I clean the knife off. I'm gonna come in here, whoops. I'm gonna come in here for my, my shadow. Put a little too much pressure on that uh, swipe. And we're just going to create a nice area of shadow. Right there, just like that. I think that looks good. Okay, now we're going to take some more white paint. I cleaned my brush off. I have a little peak right here. So I'm gonna add some snow to my little peak right there. And you see how I'm, I'm swiping it down. I'm not just coming straight down, I'm swiping it down. And that creates a nice little snow drift. I'm gonna come in here for my, my shadow color. And I'm going to bring this down. And it's okay to leave that dark, dark color that we started with on the mountain. Leave some of that color in there because that just adds to a deeper, darker shadow. And I come in here and touch this edge up a little bit because the shadow color got on there. And there we go. All fixed. 
I'm going to add a little bit more of a peak right here so that we can have, have just a little bit more of our mountain going. I want to continue that mountain. I like this mountain. It's cool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my shadow color here. Just pull that down right here. And you see all those little cracks and crevices I have? That's what really sells this as being a, a big mountain just sitting back here. And I'm going to take some more white. I'm going to touch up this little area right here. Make sure that's got a nice swooping mountain. And I'm going to add a little more blue to my shadow color because I want this shadow to stand out more than this shadow. So we're going to change the color up just a little bit just to give it its own little unique sh uh, shading. So I'm lightening up that, that gray quite a bit. I'm going to come in here and now I'm going to add this little feature. And you see how different that looks? That is what we are going for. Because we want it to stand out from the other background. Because this, this little guy right here is a little bit closer to us than uh, the one back here. So we are going to just create all of these little shapes and crevices in here. And that is perfect. Okay. Now that we have that, I'm going to take my number two brush and it's nice and dry and I'm going to just slightly tap all this color right in here. We're just tapping, tapping, tapping. Just right on the edge because what this is doing is creating this kind of mist-like effect. All right, And then we can just very gently, very, very gently fan off the bottom parts and I'm doing a, a very light upward sweep just to kind of bring the mist right back up there. I'm not worried about down here. It's okay if you get a little color down here. We're actually going to be adding some color there in a second. So we're just creating a nice soft mist-like effect on the bottom. And just like that you have some pretty beautiful mountains against the northern lights. I really like that. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our colors that we had in the sky and we're going to very lightly tap and I'm talking very, very little paint on here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put some of that color down in here. We're going to grab some of that blue. We're going to put some of that color down in here as well. And we're going to take a little bit of that green and just very, very lightly. And we're going to bring that down just like so. Now, you're probably wondering why would you put all that color down there? Well, we're going to put some water in here, and water is very reflective. So you have all these beautiful lights going on in the sky. They have to be reflecting in the water. We just don't want them as um, vibrant as the ones in the sky. So I'm using very, very little paint. So it's just more of a hint than the uh, brightness of the sky. So let's clean off our brush here. Get it nice and dry and clean. Now with a black canvas painting, you want to make sure that you have contrast going on. So when we put foothills in this mountain, we got to do something that's nice and, and uh, bright against that black. Black canvas paintings really make color pop off of a canvas. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in some foothills into this scene and make sure that the contrast is just enough. We don't want it like night and day, but we want it just enough to where you can actually see the foothills against the black background of this canvas. So we are going to grab a palette knife and mix up some color here. And the colors that we're going to mix up is we are going to use a little bit more of this blue, this Prussian blue and that shadow color in the mountain is actually going to help us form a pretty neat looking contrast. And we're just making this a little more blue than what we had before. And you see how well I'm mixing that. And I'm going to come in here and grab some more white. Now this is a nice wintry scene. So use colors, use colors to your advantage. You 
look at trees and when a lot of people think of trees they think of green they think of you know green trees with snow on them or bare trees with snow on them and that's fine but for paintings you can actually get the feeling of the painting across with colors as well so i like using colors that tell the viewer that this is a colder setting this the scene has very cold colors in it and it it helps the viewer to feel the coldness of the winter scene that you're actually painting so we have it nice and flat on the palette i'm going to take my bristles and i'm going to tap inward you see how i'm tapping that in you see the bristles bending forward that's what you want to do so you're you're just tapping those in you don't want to go overboard but you definitely want some paint on there all right so we got some paint and you see how tapping it inward kind of gives it a chiseled effect so all we're going to be doing is using the very edge of this brush and we're going to go in here and i'm going to angle it down quite a bit almost like i'm uh, putting it flat against the canvas and i'm going to tap some foothills in here like i said i want it very subtle very very subtle and I'm keeping a lot of those black contrast lines in here, mostly because it gives us a feeling of depth. I'm tapping in some more, and we're gonna add in some of this, right just down here. Now it's actually blending in with the shadow over here a little bit, so we have a dark, um, a brighter shadow color going on and it's almost matching this exactly so I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to grab some of this darker stuff for this side because it will contrast you see the contrast against that shadow right there so we have some lighter color here some darker color going on here but it's going to help us contrast where that shadow is and that way they go together very well all right and then i'm going to take some more of that that clear snow stuff that brighter color and i'm going to make sure that i have a pretty straight ending point right here okay and i didn't i didn't go in there and i just tap randomly i'm actually placing these foothills where i need them to be and you don't want to go head on like this you want to go straight on with your brush you definitely want to make sure it's angled okay i'm going to put this down and i'm going to clean my my big old number two brush off make sure that all that mineral spirits out of there and shake her down like this get all that excess paint off there we go now you can take you can leave the foothills just like this because you have all this all these really cool looking features going on in here but to add a little bit extra to it you can take your fan brush which is nice and dry and clean and very lightly let the camera get in here a little bit so they can see very very lightly you're gonna do these little upward strokes and what that does is it creates all these little tiny treetops and just adds all these little features in here you can see these little treetops just forming right in front of your eyes and it's actually pretty neat that a little brush like this can create just millions and millions and millions of trees with just a few upward very light upward uh, poles on the paint okay and sometimes you're gonna get these white streaks in here because you're touching the the snow that's okay let that happen because what that does is it adds the idea that oh maybe those trees are more covered in snow than the others each little tree is telling its own story. You're just putting them in this place for them to tell their story in. I like to think that every canvas has a story and a painter just pulls that story out of it. That's just me though. So now we have all these little trees going on in the background. Now for the bank, what we're gonna do is we are going to pull some white paint really flat okay and get that nice bead of paint on there now when i'm putting a snowy bank into my uh painting what i want to do i don't want to pull straight down again 
I want to make sure that the bank has movement, that the bank shows that it's coming outward from the land and not straight down. So we're going to take some paint, some white paint, and we're going to pull just a little bit. Don't need a lot because this is far, far away. All right. So I'm going to take some more. And I'm, you see how I'm pulling sideways. I'm not actually pulling straight down. We're just creating a nice snowy outlet right here where the water and the snow meet. And again, I'm using a very gentle, very, very gentle uh, pull. I'm letting the paint get pulled off the palette knife by the actual paint that's on the canvas. Not worried about anything else. So now we have a nice white bank right at the bottom here. And that's beautiful. Now all that color that we put in the water, this is where it's really gonna come to life. I put enough paint on here of the white of the bank so that I can actually pull some reflection now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find out where the water actually meets the bank and you're going to pull it straight down. And you see how those colors now start to come to life on this bank. And what we're doing is we are just pulling the reflection of that snow down from the water. Okay, just very, very gently. You just want to grab the very edge of it. You don't want to go overboard with it. Because just grabbing that very little edge, you see how much paint I'm actually pulling down. And that's all we want. Okay, so now I'm going to clean my bristles off. I don't have to clean it in the mineral spirits. I'm just going to wipe the excess paint off. And you see how I just, all that paint is gone. Now we're just going to give it one quick little swipe to the left. Okay. Yeah. Make sure you cover the whole reflection. What that does is you see, you're going to see these little lines going straight across that reflection. And what it does is it actually adds the indication of water movement, which is really, really neat. All right, it's a cool little effect, but it, uh, it's simple but very effective. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab just an itty bitty tiny amount of paint on, my, on there. It's a little less than I'd use for like snow or the, the bank here that we used. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut in a water line like that. And what this does is it creates the, the feeling of flat water because you have the, the, the brush strokes of the reflection going straight down. So now we got to flatten it out again. And what we can do that just by cutting in a little bit of a water line. Just like that. And that water line creates, gives that water a feeling of flatness. So it's actually coming out from the banks now. And it gives a feeling, it's, it, it settles that land right in there, okay? Now, I went a little bit lower than the reflection because if you can come in a little closer camera and see this, I liked the little pull down of this paint because now it looks like there was maybe water coming down right here, like a little waterfall, but now it's all frozen. So that's all ice just kind of hanging down there. I like the effect of these little ice sickles hanging down off the, uh, the land. So that was a, that was a, a little, accident that <laughs> I know I hate saying that but it was it was a happy accident and uh, it happened and I think it I think it looks great um, I love when that stuff happens so what we're gonna do now is we are going to put something in our foreground so that we can push all this stuff back even farther so what I'm gonna do is I am going to grab some black and I'm gonna take some more of this blue color that we've been using this whole time. And I'm just going to get a nice dark version of that color. This is almost black, but not quite. And we want a nice dark color. And what we're going to do, excuse me, cameraman, I'm going to grab a different brush that I forgot to grab. We're going to take our one inch half round brush. And I'm going to tap in, get get this nice and loaded up. All right, we want this nice and loaded up. 
And what we're going to do is we are going to tap in. You're not going to see this. I can see it, but I don't think the camera is going to pick this up. And what it's what I'm doing is I'm creating just these this idea of a bush sitting there. And I'm going to grab some more. And I just want to have a little bit of foliage going down here. I'm going to grab some more. I'm going to really load that up. And we are going to close off this side using the same kind of foliage. Now what this does is this little half round, you see the, the curve of the half round brush. If you use that curve, you're going to get these really bushy looking uh, bushes. And it just, it just has a really pretty shape to it. But you got to use the, the shape of the brush to do its work. So don't, don't go in there and go uh, head on like this. Actually use the side of the brush. Let that curve make that shape for you. We're gonna clean off this little half round brush. Nice clean shaker off. Now, we are going to grab some blue, Prussian blue, and put that over here. We're going to grab some white and we're going to put that there. Now, the rule of thumb is that thick paint uh, is the basis for the thin paint to hang on. So we are going to grab some liquid white, which is just a very runny white paint that uh, we cover our canvas with for other paintings. Mix that up a little bit to make sure that it's all mixed. And what this does is it helps to thin up the paint a little bit. And you don't need much at all because this is like really super strong paint. Um, it thins out paint fairly quickly. So I have a little bit on the tip of my brush here. And I'm going to tap it into that very light blue color that I created. Now, like I said, we're using colors to indicate the feeling of the painting. The feeling that this is a very cold painting and there's frost on the branches and those trees in the background are all frost covered. So we're gonna use a color, a very light blue color that's very extremely cold looking. And we're going to put highlights on all that front bushes that we have here. So what we're gonna do is we are going to find spots where we want those highlights. Don't just go in here willy nilly and start putting in highlights. You wanna make sure that you are creating the right highlights on the right branches. And you're just gonna go in here. Now, every time you do this, you're picking up a little bit of that dark paint underneath. This thin paint is sitting right on top of that thick paint. So you wanna make sure that your brush isn't filled with dark paint before you go back in and grab some more. And we're just creating these little highlights, just like that. All right. I'm gonna knock off the paint. You don't have to clean it completely. Um, just knock off the bristles in the the, uh, paper, the towel that you're using. And then you can go back in here, grab some more, and now we got some clean highlighty colors. The cleaner the, the paint, the brighter your highlights are gonna be and they'll, you won't have to work as hard for it. Now we have all these pretty little highlighted frost covered branches and, and bushes and foliage in the foreground, which just adds to that painting completely. Now, I had different colors on here. I had brown, green, and all that. But as the painting came to life for me, I didn't use those. I decided not to use them. I wanted a very cold looking painting. And that's exactly what I got. So I used some color that I uh, had on the, can on the palette, and I decided not to use it. So the color on the palette, the blue, the yellow, I'm sorry, the brown, the yellow, the green, um, we just didn't use them. And that's okay, because I can always go on to my next painting with those colors. But for this painting, we wanted to keep it nice and cold as I was painting it and uh, as it was coming to life for me, I decided to keep it nice and cold. So I used a very limited palette color, but I think it was very effective and I really like how this painting came out. I hope you enjoyed it as well. And if you guys like this painting and the techniques and, and showing you, I know I'll get better at, at doing these videos, um, but I hope you liked it. And if you did like it, let me know and I'll do some more.
And uh, that's all for now. So thank you.